have a total $175,000 of, of debt. Help me understand the $70,000 of credit card yeah. debt, um, yeah. paying 25% because obviously that's a yeah. killer right now. Yep, that's a in killer. Financial yeah. model. We had kids about five years ago, so we weren't making much money then. So we had a lot of bills that went on the credit cards. So, and then we started daycare and as anybody knows, that's really expensive. So we've been paying I want to say close to thirty, forty thousand dollars a year for that. It only looks like you save four percent um, to to your future, which means out of what you're making, it you're spending ninety six percent. Two hundred thousand dollars is leaving your household economy. When you're sixty five years old, your two hundred thousand dollar consumption. Um, it's going to cost three hundred and forty-three thousand dollars. Walk me through the auto loans and and the situation there. I had a, a car and a drunk driver crashed and told my car while I was at a parking lot. Were you in the car? I was in the car. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's mm. that's really traumatic. Hello, this is Bradley. I'm from Minnesota, and this is Naked Numbers, and I'm forty-five years old. Bradley, welcome to the show, Naked Numbers. The financial disclosures. This is not investment advice, insurance advice legal advice, tax advice, please don't sue me. This is for educational purposes only. I'm really, really am really, really proud of you mm. putting yourself out there because there's a lot of people that there's a lot of people that apply to be on the show. Not mm. all of them follow through. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, I was almost be, one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, what you do and and why you decided to come on come on the show and um, and then maybe what your one or two biggest financial questions are kind of coming into the show. All right. Well, I work in the science field. So a lot of numbers, analysis of data, things like that. So kind of want to get my finances in shape, get out of debt, make it so I can enjoy life and not always worry about debt and make it so my family doesn't have to worry about money so they can just not stress out every day that daycare costs are outrageous and can't afford that. And, oh my God, how are we going to pay for this daycare? Or I want to get this new couch for my house and I can't afford it. How, what, what I, how, how can I make that happen? So that's yeah, kind of, what does your wife do? Uh, she's a teacher. Okay. Okay. And, mm -hmm. it, and it looks like she has two jobs. Yes. And a consultant on the side. Okay. So teacher, mm -hmm. consultant, and then mm -hmm. uh, what type of science thing do you do? Like, my dad has a PhD in molecular biology. Oh, that's um, cool. Don't yeah. even know how to spell that. So, <laughs> but <laughs> chemistry. What kind of things do you do? Uh, chemistry. Now, an analyzing chemical compounds to see what their structures are and how they work and if they're doing the things they should do in products. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that uh, mm -hmm. good for you. Your your mm -hmm. IQ is on a whole nother planet than mine. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, uh, I wouldn't that's, go that's that far. <laughs> Um, all right. So what, what made you want to, to be on the show? I mean, you said that, you know, debt, want to get things in order. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you found, found mm -hmm. me on YouTube and you're just, you're mm -hmm. just crazy enough to be like, you know what, I'll, I'll come yeah. on the show and talk about my financial situation. Yeah. I want to talk to you about finding ways to make your money work better. Not necessarily yep. just pay off debt, lose the money. It's like you have debt, but how can you use debt to leverage that to make it so you can make money? off of your debt at times and not always worry about, I have all this debt, pay all the debt off before I invest in something. So how do you manage both worlds? Pay off your debt and do some investing. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so what what I'm now gonna do is, I'm gonna just dive in to try to better understand your, your situation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I might ask you some clarifying questions, but I'm gonna do my mm -hmm. very best to refrain yep. from ideas, which is very yep. hard for me, um, but I'm going to try to best understand your situation. So you and your wife, what would you say is like your why? If you follow any of our content, you know that intentional living is very important to us. Like mm -hmm. it's very, very important to me that um, the people that we work with have their intentional living metric. What would you say is what would what what does that mean to you? And like what would be like a deeper reason to to your your why and your family's why? I want to be able to live life and not be stressed out about day to day bills. And make it so my wife can enjoy life and not always worry about the next bill and health stuff yep. and just be able to enjoy the day and not think, oh, God, the day's over. I can go to bed. Yep. So my yeah. question to you is, if you didn't worry about that, 
what things like it sounds like mm -hmm. that a lot of a lot of your energy is going to like the stress of the day to day and money has, yeah. a, has a huge pain point. If that yeah. wasn't the case, where would you where would you be spending mm -hmm. your time? Uh, what would you be pursuing? Uh, it would be great to pursue more time with the kids. Not my wife works nights, so a lot of times it's I go home, take care of the kids, go to bed. So, yep. and we want to spend time together and do fun things as a family. And awesome. Spend and you have time a five-year-old and a four-year-old? Correct. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So that's, that's, that's helpful to know. And then um, you, your job as a, as a chemistry scient scientist, mm -hmm. um, you make $110,000 a year. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it looks like, does that increase 3% with inflation? Like, has that been pretty historically correct? Uh, it depends on the year, but maybe 3% is a good estimate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then it looks like your your wife has two jobs, uh, mm -hmm. one that she makes 55000 mm -hmm. and the other 45000 Um Correct. She's a consultant and a teacher. Yep. Which which one's which? Uh, the consultant makes about forty five, and the teacher makes about 55 Okay. And um, that sounds that sounds good. So that brings your your total income to about two hundred and ten thousand gross income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, when it comes to your your liabilities, um, you have a total, and I'm not including your house. I'm putting that in a separate category, but I am okay. including your HELOC here. Looks mm -hmm. like you have a total of 174,000. You know, let's say 175 thousand dollars of of debt. Um, mm -hmm. You have two two auto loans that mm -hmm. one one is at six point nine percent with a yep. twenty twenty eight thousand dollar uh, balance with yep. a five hundred fifty dollar monthly payment. Mm -hmm. You have auto loan two that's sixteen thousand with a one point nine percent interest correct. rate. Is that correct? Yes, yep, that's correct. Um, and you're paying four hundred fifty dollars a month. Uh, you have four credit cards. Looks like some of them are yours, some of them are your spouse's. Mm -hmm. All with a unpaid balance of twenty, 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 making that six seventy thousand dollars of credit card at an average of 25% interest. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. That's about right. Okay. And you're paying a thousand pretty much across the board. And then you're paying 500 on the $10,000 balance. Yep. Um, you have a loan, a $18,000 loan that's mm -hmm. at 8% with mm -hmm. a, with a uh, monthly payment of $771. You have a mm -hmm. HELOC, $42,000 HELOC. You're paying 9.2%. You're yep. five hundred dollars, and then I'm going to talk to you about your house at a later time. Um, so, so talk to me about about this. Um, and I, I'm sure when you talk about stress, this is probably mm -hmm. a big part of yes. your stress. Mm -hmm. um, wh walk me through the auto loans and and the situation there. Um, we had really old cars, so we needed to get a family car, so we got a new van. So we yeah. got that a minivan. Three, yeah. Minivan. I, I'm a fan of minivans, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm team minivan, so yep. that's great. So, so we got that for the sliding doors. Parents okay. know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and, I, and then the auto lo loan too. Yeah. Was that was that your the minivan or is that a different? No, nope, that's a different one. I had a a car and a drunk driver crashed and told my car while I was at a parking lot, parking. So I was at a stoplight and they totaled it. So I needed to get a new vehicle because of that. Did, did their insurance pay for any of that? Insurance is insurance. They only cover the value of what was damaged, not a new vehicle. So okay. you get so, paid out for the value of the vehicle that was totaled, and that's it. And no in one was state. hurt during that? Were no. you in the car? I was in the car, yes. Yeah. Wow. That's mm. that's really traumatic. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. So you have these. Do you, do you know what term, how many years um, the loan is stretched out for? I think it's five and a half years. For both? Yes. And then how long have you had these? Um, 2020 and the other one's a year old. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So help me understand the $70,000 of credit card yeah. debt um, yeah. paying 25% because obviously that's a yeah. killer right now yep, that's in killer. your financial yeah. model. Um, and I'm really curious by the, like the flat monthly, mm -hmm. like I'm curious about the unpaid balance and the flat monthly payment. So help me understand what, what, what you did here and, and kind of the, the situation right now. Well, 
the, we had kids about five years ago, so we weren't making much money then. So we had a lot of bills that went on to credit cards. So, and then we started daycare and as anybody knows, that's really expensive. So we've been paying, I want to say close to thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year for that for a couple of years. So having to pay that makes it so you can't pay a lot of your other bills. So a lot of stuff has gone on credit cards because of that. Is um is your five year old going to daycare right now? No, nope, she's in kindergarten. Okay, so she's in Just kindergarten. Started. Um, but your four year old is is in yep. daycare. Yep, daycare okay. preschool. And you yep. have on here your daycare costs two grand a month. Yep. But was that is that on the low end then? That that's that's about accurate right now for one child. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, twenty. So twenty four thousand dollars. That's actually eleven percent of your annual in household income going to daycare um yep. now is is your four-year-old is this the last year in daycare yes and then so in kindergarten that that's a that takes the that replaces daycare almost all of it yes you still have to pay okay. before and after care if you need it which is okay but that's nowhere less. near yeah. to that nowhere near that no no okay okay all right that's uh um, we, we have some clients that run daycares. And so mm -hmm. I know firsthand the business model is pretty, pretty, uh, it depends on who you are in the equation, but it's, it, it people pay a lot of money for, mm -hmm. for daycare. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So your, so, so the, did you just open up a new card? Like is 20,000 kind of like maxed out and you'd open up a new card? Uh, we had good credit. So we were just given credit on these cards that we had. So we've had them for like five, 10 years. So they're old cards. Okay. And yeah. I'm assuming the thousand dollar payment, is that, is that lowering the balance or is that just pretty yeah. much like the minimum payment? Well, I have set up to have minimum payments of about a thousand and I'll do extra if there's more money to pay off. So okay. okay. A little bit more than the minimum. Um, and 25% have you looked at, is that just a guess or is, are they all at 25%? Uh, that's about what they are. They might be a little less, a little more depending on the card. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. We're definitely, I'm definitely going to come back to this. I have some ideas and thoughts to process mm -hmm. with you. Um, you're on, on line seven, you have a loan, um, for 18,000 at 8%, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is actually other than your mortgage, um, mm -hmm. and your car loans. It's, it's relatively small. You pay $771 for that. What is that, that loan? That was just a consolidation loan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have your HELOC, um, you know, outstanding, if, uh, at, and it's a 9%, um, interest rate balance is over 42,000. You pay $500, which I want you to know it's something that I just, I, I always look at you're paying $500 minimum payment for a $10,000 credit card, but mm -hmm. you're paying $500 and you're controlling four times as much mm -hmm. capital for your HELOC. Yeah. And so that just tells you the power of terms and mm -hmm. the power of interest rate. Um, mm -hmm. But this HELOC, did you also use this HELOC to consolidate debt? That was for home projects, home projects. Um, okay. Yeah. What, what, um, what kitchen, kitchen remodel? Uh, new windows, new furnace, new air conditioner, water heater, all those. Yeah. Aren't died. windows, windows are crazy expensive. They're outrageously okay. expensive. It's, it's yeah. you, you don't think, you don't think windows are going to be like, you have yeah. to take out a loan for windows, but, but you do. Um, and, yeah. and, and then shades too. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, holy moly. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, so that's that. And, and we'll get to your house in a second, but you do have quite a bit of equity there. Um, what's your, are you guys still have good credit? Yeah, I think it's in the 700s. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So both you and your wife, 700 plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's going to be important um any any anything else that i should know as it relates to to that we're going to go to your house second but anything else that i should know about mm -hmm. debt i think that's about it just focus on credit cards is what i want to pay off first and then move on yeah. um, okay let's go to your real estate you have a primary uh real estate i i'm seeing two things do you pay is your monthly payment two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars Yes, that's okay. a monthly payment that's with everything included. Okay, it's twelve percent. So you're paying just slightly more for your mortgage than you are for daycare, um, and for one child, and for two you, child would be less. Okay, yeah. and you and, and it looks like um, you have three hundred and six. 
about three hundred thousand dollars of equity. Now I'm assuming the home equity is a, is against that, so that would bring it down to about like two hundred fifty. You have about two hundred fifty thousand dollars of equity right now in your home. Sure, I don't know those numbers probably add up, okay. but it's 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 all a game. Housing yeah, so I'm I'm just looking yeah. at you said your unpaid balance is one hundred ninety three thousand. Mm -hmm. Your interest rates at three, three and a quarter, which means you mm -hmm. got your house a couple of years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your market value is at a half a million, which yeah. that could be a, take, a number yeah. that yeah. give or take. And mm -hmm. so that's where I'm, that's where I'm getting the, so we could with, even with the home equity, the math that you're, the numbers that you're giving me, I, I see a quarter million dollars of potential equity. Mm -hmm. um, my, my question is, is this home that you're in? Um, I like that it's only 12% of your household. So yeah, it, me too. it seems That's very great. reasonable. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, is this something like, is this home something that you guys are going to, you know, what's, what's the vision of the home is, are you guys happy with it? Are you thinking about moving? No, we're happy. Like where, what's your thoughts as it relates to home? We're happy. We want to live there until our kids graduate high school. Okay. So you're, you're going to be yeah. there for, we're for gonna a be while. There. I'm assuming yeah. the 30, 30 year mortgage. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as it relates to your, Debt portfolio, this is obviously the most efficient loan that you have by yeah. a long shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even it's from a cash flow perspective, it's 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 even better than your um, car loan at, mm -hmm. you know, less percentage because it's such a long period of time. So it's mm -hmm. a it's a very efficient um, as it relates to to cash flow. So I'm going to I'm going to go on, but I have some thoughts as it relates to that. Um, now, let's look at your assets. I, I total up your assets. And it looks like you just have under three hundred thousand dollars of assets. Part of that is your four hundred one k. You have IRA. You have savings account. You have another IRA, and then you have um, you know you know stock stock portfolio. And we won't get into the the details of the holdings, um, but it looks like you are you put um, about five thousand dollars a year into your savings account, which currently has forty thousand dollars in it. Yeah, about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, you have uh, a four hundred one k that you put five thousand dollars. It looks like you get an employer match at five thousand. So yep. that you know mathematically, that's a that works out quite well. You have eighty two thousand dollars in the four hundred one k. You have two IRAs. One that's a that's has one hundred sixty thousand, and one that has just under seven thousand. Um, yep. And any and you're not contributing to either one of those IRAs. And then you it looks like you have um, stock a stock account with yeah. with ten thousand dollars that you're not contributing to correct yeah okay um any uh anything else that i should i obviously have thoughts here it doesn't look like you're contributing other than to a sames account with the forty thousand is that is that just like an emergency fund for you guys or yeah pretty much yeah we it's okay. just set aside in case there's a extreme emergency that we need it that we'd be willing okay. to liquidate some assets Okay, obviously your 401k is is um I'll I'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, it's so hard for me to like wait till the end. Mm -hmm. Uh but I, IRAs um none of these are Roth, they're traditional IRAs. I think there's $1000 in a Roth. But okay. That's okay. It. All right. Um that sounds good and then okay, the that's I'm good here. Do you have any uh, you have any questions or clarifying thoughts as it relates to your assets? No, those are all pretty accurate. So yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to life insurance. I, do you have any life insurance through your company? Just their work. I think it's just a match of what your salary is. Okay. So you bought mm -hmm. about a hundred thousand. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. I obviously we're gonna talk about this. Um, you don't have any disability income insurance. Do you have anything through work? Uh, there's no disability. Well, I have insurance. I. have had to use that in the past, but no, I there's no disability insurance okay. that I'm using. It's there yep. in case I need it, but I don't use any of it. So okay. Okay. Um, right looks like you guys. I am assume that you would have good health insurance, and your and your wife yep. would have good health insurance. So that's yep. that's taken care of. You have yeah. a, you said you have long term care. Um, what, what what do you mean by that? Oh, I have it as an option for work. Okay. Okay. So, I, yeah. so, I, okay. That's yeah. Cause yeah, we're good there. Mm -hmm. And then your ho auto home insurance, it looks like you, do you on a annual basis, take yep. a look at that and yeah. um, make sure that you're have the right protection. One thing that you, do, you don't have is a 
liability umbrella, I would encourage you mm -hmm. um, next time you meet with your, you know, Talk PNC person, just just ask what 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 it would look like. An umbrella is like a very good thing to have. It kind of covers not just your home and what happens on your property, but it kind of follows you if something else um, happens. It's it's great insurance to have. It's just an overarching protection. Um, and then it looks like um, when it comes to estate planning, uh, this is you you haven't done anything from a, a simple will, living will, health care, power of attorney, revocable nope. trust. None of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything um, when it comes to future, obviously, there's a couple things that I'm bookmarking. It's like um, in one more year, it's like we can have a countdown to when daycare <laughs> ends. Yes. That, that's one Counting thing. The is there seconds. anything else that is like you, you guys both seem to have cars that are going to be around for a while. Yep. Anything else that like a roof that needs to be done, like anything else that's in your head that's like, oh, this needs, yeah. this is coming up. Well, there's some yard work, some landscaping, and maybe okay. redo the deck. That's getting really old and rickety, but okay. that's it. Okay, those are the main expenses. Awesome. All right, awesome. Um, and anything else that I should know before I jump into my thoughts or about your financial situation? So I think that's pretty much sums it all up. There's uh, always random things that come up, so yep. those will happen. Okay. So here's a here's where I'll begin. So um, you got right, right now you make two hundred and ten thousand. I'm showing that you are saving about ten thousand dollars a year, um, mm -hmm. and five of that, half of that is is going to a savings account. Which what what's the what's the interest rate on that savings account? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Maybe okay. one percent. Yeah, yeah. Um okay. So it's going to a savings account and um and so I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt that each and every year your savings is growing by five thousand. Um the but what a lot of people it it doesn't they keep their savings account at a level and and so they're mm -hmm. saving money but they're not actually saving money. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Like you're saving yeah. money but it's That's you're, you're spending same, it. same amount of money. So it giving you the benefit of the doubt it uh, it only looks like you save 4% um to to your future which means out of what you're making it you're spending 96%. Now you might before you before you jump on me you're like I'm not spending like all that money. I'm not spending $200,000. It's indirect whether it's through taxes or other things. Yeah. $200,000 is leaving your household economy. Yes. And so um the the one thing that I just wrote down in 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 this is when you're 65 years old your $200,000 consumption mm. um it's going to cost $343,000 a year just to feel like your $200,000 today. Mm -hmm. Now obviously there's going to be like there's going to be daycare that's not there but there's other things that are going to come up and with inflation inflation's not mm -hmm. our friend when it comes to spending money. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I'm, I'm noting is, um, there, like the first thing I'm highlighting is we got to figure out how to get uh, with your age and the assets that you currently have, we got to figure out how to save significant more. Like, mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll look at a calculator later, but you know, I'm starting at 15, 20, 20%. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy overwhelming, but it's just mm -hmm. the reality of, um, right now, 4% is just, there's no world where you're going to be able to outrun that. Mm -hmm. um, any questions or thoughts on, on just my overall picture when I think of like the big picture, you make money, which you make good money. It's mm -hmm. cool that you're going to continue to increase um, your income. And, but overall, that's, that's a big picture. The, the second question I had, do you have any thoughts before I jump into the next? No, that sounds good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. My, my next question is, do it sounds like your wife obviously um, does something on the side. Do you, yeah. do you or your wife have any thoughts about another side gigs or is like, are you, do you work? No, we're it sounds like out. you work quite a bit. There is no more work that can be done. There's too much. We'd like to cut back. Okay. okay. Like so, so is it fair to say like your $210,000 a year with increasing with inflation, like increasing mm -hmm. with inflation is like from a, from a model standpoint, we should be spending our time and energy looking at other things, but income wise, you guys are in a good place for now. Yeah. It might drop okay. if we don't do as much consulting work. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's good to know. Yeah. 
Okay, so now I'm going to look at um, your your liabilities, and this is where this is where when I look at what's what's in your house, and I look at your assets, and I look at your liabilities. One of the things that is it's just really really clear to me is um, if we take seventy thousand dollars and we think about the credit cards like an investment, mm -hmm. and I take seventy. $70,000 and you make it 25%. That's an equivalent of that $70,000 portfolio would be paying out 17,500 of interest to you if it was mm -hmm. making 25%. Yeah. If I had to guess, and again, this is not investment advice. If I had to guess your investments are not earning anywhere close to that and pr probably earn less than 10% if you annualize it. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I'm that I'm highlighting is if are these credit cards do you have you have access to use use them even if you paid them off, correct? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that I would that I would do this might sound radical, but I would take your stock account. I would take your save, high savings account and and I like the idea of keeping some but the cool thing about paying off credit cards is it's a revolving debt, meaning if you had to use it as an emergency, you could use it. So yep. it's not like it's not like you're paying off a mortgage or you're paying off a car loan. You have the ability to swipe the card if you need it, but you are getting crushed right now with 25%. It's like mm -hmm. we need we need to figure out how to eliminate this bad debt as soon as possible because no investment or no amount of raises is going to solve the problem because it, mm -hmm. I think of it as just like a literal asset like eliminator kind of mm -hmm. deal. Yep. So I I look at your your situation and I go, um, I would look into the 401k and see what would a loan look like for your 401k. And okay. I would figure out, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near 25%. And so what I would look is what are the max loans on my 401k and for the sole purpose of paying this thing off, I look, I would sell your stock account and just mm -hmm. cut your, I mean, it doesn't look like it's a traditional, so you might have to pay a little bit of taxes. I would use that for your debt. And then I, I wouldn't put all 40, but I would, knowing that a credit card is pretty, pretty universal um and you could use it i would take a good chunk of that savings pay off that credit card is knowing that those credit cards can can be you know utilized i'm not going to mm -hmm. be the dave ramsey and say cut it up because i also from a risk management standpoint i want to make sure that if something happens that you guys have some ability to have money but mm -hmm. i look at credit cards as something that's like i would rather you pay off 25 percent versus earn one percent it might feel a little different because you don't have that money in a bank account that's mm -hmm. a lots of money you're going to have indirectly because you're not paying that bad debt yep um so between the 401k selling the stocks maybe taking 20 25 30 thousand dollars of savings um the debts that would i would eliminate are all, all the credit card debt and then um, when it comes to your auto and when it comes to your both autos, I'm not, it's, it's not amazing debt, but it's not horrible. So I'm totally okay mm -hmm. with you guys continuing to pay that. Um, especially, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And then when it comes to your um, home equity, is that just an interest only? Uh, no. It's... Okay, so you're paying. Yeah. Through, you know, when was the last time? This is nine point two percent. I'm assuming that's like a hmm. adjustable. Interest yeah, that was rate an adjustable on, rate. Yeah, part of it's adjustable. Part of out? it's fixed. Part of it's adjustable. Part is fixed. I think about twenty is adjustable and twenty is fixed rate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're putting nine point two, but the reality is it's yeah. smaller. Okay. Yeah. Um, how much? When did you take that out? Uh, probably about five years ago. Okay. What I also would do, and take this, I mean, obviously, like, take this with a grain of salt because of the current time of us recording, interest rates are higher, but um, I would look, at, I would work with your, with your bank and just at least know with your potential 
um, two hundred fifty thousand dollars of equity in your home, I would just un- I would just know like what are my options there, mm-hmm. because there may be a world where um, you can take out extra and just for the sole purpose of um, reconsolidating. Because I look mm-hmm. at your anything t- collateralized from your home is just going to be a more efficient term, and I would mm-hmm. much rather knock off any bad debt and then pay one one debt back knowing that it's collateralized by the home and knowing that it's going to be most likely less than 12 percent and and in a lot of times the terms are going to be a lot a lot more favorable yeah um any questions here because this is this is quite frankly like i like my mindset right now is is let's get Mm -hmm. this bad debt out because i'm looking at you know thousands of dollars that are going to this Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that that money can supercharge what you're what you're currently doing. I know that um, there's some people out there that were like, "Hey, you can fund life insurance policies and then borrow against that and have your dollars doing more than one job." I mm. personally would not do that. Mm. Um, we'll talk about life insurance in a second. I do think yeah. you need life insurance, but I would not do permanent life insurance before we knock out all this bad debt. Yeah. Um, that- I think I agree. It, it does not make sense financially to try to do that. Yep. Um, yeah, because if we do, if we do, um, if we just look at your credit cards and your daycare, I'm looking at two, three, four, five, fifty-five, fifty-five. Five thousand five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. If we knock those things out. Yeah. That's and the plan to get those paid off, and not pay daycare after this. That year. is um. That's insane. That's a sixty-eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Of of money right there. Mm-hmm. So the the number one thing is I would be totally fine if we took money. F- even in your investments, but it'll call, talk to your banker and let's figure out a way as soon as possible to knock out credit card debt. Um, and then it comes down to the, um, and I did a video about this, about my debt framework, but it comes down to understanding, you know, opportunity cost of like, can you earn more or what are, what are you making? And your 8% debt, your um, six point nine percent and all those things—they're—they're they're not great debt, but they're not like crazy bad. So I would just—I mm-hmm. would play that. I would—I would do like what makes more sense, but I wouldn't tell mm-hmm. you to like sell a bunch of investments to pay off those debts when it comes to credit cards. Um, I think from a cash flow perspective, you're going to see that immediately. Um, now, do you still utilize credit cards to finance your your lifestyle, or is this kind of like for the past? Um, we use credit cards and just pay them off monthly. So we use them okay. as our main source of paying off anything right now. Okay. 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 Um, all right. Any questions as it relates to that? Do you, and you can, you can give me pushback, um, mm-hmm. to maybe why you haven't already, or you mm-hmm. agree, disagree, but this is, uh, that's, that's going to be a big thing for your family. Yep. Yep. The credit cards are the first thing that's going to get paid off or. Planning on paying. And you know where? All, do you know yeah. how, you have a game plan of how you yeah. knock those out? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I have a plan that any spare cent we have is going straight to that for the next six months. What are your thoughts about what I said about the stocks, savings account, and four hundred one k loan? Uh, I'll look into them. I'll see what they are, but I'm not too excited about liquidating future potential assets that could increase in yeah I, value. But, but can I mean, here's the thing is, yes, your well, a 401k loan is mm-hmm. not really liquidating, but yeah. kind of, mm-hmm. but your 401k is not earning anywhere near what you're paying out. Mm-hmm. So it's like, would you, and would you take a loan or would you withdraw some of your money to earn 25%? The answer would be yes. Mm-hmm. You'd be a genius. And yep. you have a guaranteed way to, on your financial life, to earn 25% on your money. Okay. So if you knock that out, then you can 
take that money that you're currently paying and put it right back in to your 401k or right back into your stock account. And you'll actually in six months to a year have more money just because you're eliminating any of the things that are draining your income. And you're now have that money to re reinvest. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, your, your home, I kind of just mentioned, I would, you have $250,000 of potential equity there. I would just understand what your options are. Um, you have a, I, I wouldn't want you to change up your crazy, crazy mortgage. Cause you have a great interest rate, but mm -hmm. if you could potentially take a HELOC and tap into some of that, that's not going to affect your main mortgage. That's something mm -hmm. to look into because that might yeah. be another thing that you can look into from a standpoint yeah. of, of funds. Um, but with today's interest rate, it may or may not be advantageous. Um, we talked about your, your assets. Um, do you, you have obviously money in the market. Do you have, what's your, what's your investment philosophy from a standpoint of like, is it just to save and then take out income in retirement or like, what is your, what, what is your investment strategy as a, um, strategy as to invest and just hold it and wait. <laughs> until retirement. Okay. That's kind of the strategy. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just do some math here. Let's say you didn't liquidate any of your money and what, what kind of rate of return are you hoping to get from a standpoint of your investments? 10% a year would be really good. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do, we'll do 10, 10%. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's, that, that would be like, usually when I um, am giving examples, I usually give six or 7% as like mm -hmm. a more conservative. Mm -hmm. um, so we might do both, but I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do 10%. And we're, we're going to do, we're going to do two scenarios. We're going to do scenario number one, where you're doing, we have $300,000 at uh, already. Um, you're saving $10,000 a year. Um, now, technically, technically, you're will give you the match. So, we'll, you're saving fifteen fifteen thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. um, you're forty five. So, sh how how many? When would you like like to retire at sixty five? What is the hope? Well, the hope and dream is fifty nine and a half, but it's probably fifty nine and a half. So, what, yeah. what what is that? It's fifteen fifteen years. Yeah, about fifteen years. Okay, fifteen years. Ten percent. We have a future. Future value. So assuming you mm -hmm. never lose a dollar, 10%, mm -hmm. you have a, a, a nest egg of 1.7 million. Okay. Now, are you familiar with like the 4% rule? Yes. Where you take off 4% okay. every year. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now there's a debate around it about how that potentially could be too aggressive. Mm -hmm. I think with good planning, it's a good, it's a good thing to have, um, especially because if you're working with, with people that can really help you, I think they can figure out other asset classes, whether it's annuities or life insurance or other things to, to get that, if not more, but if people don't have any good planning, three to 4% is kind of the, the number. So if we do, if we do that, we take a uh, 1. 1. 1.1.7 million, multiply that by 4%, we're looking at 68,000. And remember, do you remember what um, what your income? You're at age sixty five, so so we'll, we can we can go to uh, at age fifty. At age sixty, your current consumption that you guys are doing now, you, you're you would need to spend two hundred and ninety six thousand dollars mm -hmm. every year just to maintain what your what you're currently spending today. Now, I know that you, you may not have a mortgage, you're not going to have other things, but do you agree that the cost of living is just going to increase due to inflation? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what I look at is, is if we don't do, if we don't change anything, your $1.7 million nest egg is a lot bigger than majority of people that we see due to just life. But you know, in the next 20 years, that's next 15 years, like that's, that's not going to cut it from a standpoint of, of retirement. Now there's going to be social security, there's going to be other things, but mm -hmm. that's just something 
that's just something to factor in. Um, now, one thing that I just want to point out is let's say, let's say we have two hundred thousand dollars. Let let's say we take a hundred thousand dollars out of investments and pay off bad debt. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we're instead of three hundred, I'm putting two hundred thousand dollars of of money, and but but we're taking five thousand dollars extra that's going to bad debt, and we're putting it towards our investments. Mm -hmm. So that's what 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 is that? Five thousand times twelve. That's sixty thousand dollars extra. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding sixty thousand dollars to your fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. which is seventy five thousand dollars. I don't think this is necessarily realistic. I'm just letting you know, like mathematically, yep. at ten percent, we're gonna use those numbers. I'm gonna I'm gonna lower it in a second. Mm -hmm. You have a future value of three point two million dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you say you don't want to kill compounding, like if you just look cash flow to cash flow, $3.2 million nest egg using the 4% uh, number would be 128,000, still not getting us uh, to where we, to where we actually need to be. And I think part mm -hmm. of, part of the issue is the 15 year time horizon. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I look at back at the investment calculator, I go, what if we, what if we did, you know, 25 years in this scenario, you have almost $10 million. So yeah. part of, part of your situation is just the compounding curve. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I think if I were you, I would look to a, maybe a 7% rate of return when we look at yeah. our models. Cause I think 10%. Over yeah, the next 15 years. Much better than you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. And even at 7% in 25 years from now, which, which again, puts you at 70, which is not, this is not necessarily what we want, puts you at just under 6 million mm -hmm. at, uh, you know, at 65, uh, we have 3.8 million, which, you know, doing the 4% rule of that gives you still still income might look good today. But the point that I'm making is from, we should call retirement planning, future cash flow planning. Mm -hmm. And the decisions that we make today, we should be thinking, how is this going to affect my future cash flow? All the financial gurus out there want to just focus on rate of return, mm -hmm. which is fine. But very few people are talking about how do I create more cash flow? How can I design my portfolios today to create more cash flow. Yeah. And I think I think the goal should be is like figure out what that number is. And to be fair, your your consumption number could be a lot lower, but figure out the inflation adjusted consumption number, which which could be 150,000, 200,000, and then we got to figure out you can quote unquote retire or you're financially free when your financial life is able to finance your ability to live. Yeah, you know, looking at other things as well. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I've said a ton. Does does my philosophy in the future and does that does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. It does. Yes. Okay. So big big fan of um, income planning. This is not a commercial for our business, but this mm -hmm. is what we do. And so mm -hmm. you should either work with someone like us or someone else that can take your look at your financial life and reverse engineer from a, hey, if we're going to do the whole market. What do we need to do from a 15, 20 years from now? And how do we, how do we do the, how do we look at that from an income standpoint? And I would work okay. with somebody that really has the end in mind because the only reason you're doing 401ks, IRAs and all this is for future income. Yeah. And while these assets may look good today with the match, they don't always translate into what we think they're going to do on the income side. And that's why it's just important to work with someone that can think with the end in mind as it relates to this. But that's where I yep. go back to everything from a cash flow perspective. And if we can take an asset, sell an asset, pay off a, a liability that's sucking cash flow and then redirect that cash flow to an asset side, um, mm -hmm. currently in future, it's going to be better. Okay. All right. So life insurance, um, you essentially have none. You have about one time salary for, for your business. What is your thought? Does your wife have any life insurance? I don't think so. No. Okay. 
this is something that like if I if if you look at your home and you look at your car, these are we're unemotional about our home and maybe not. Maybe mm-hmm. we're that's actually the the worst statement I've made. We're very emotional about our homes <laughs> and cars. But th- we but we insure them because if something, you know, happens and you have a really real example, um, mm-hmm. insurance doesn't you don't get rich off of insurance, but it's supposed to quote unquote replace its value. Mm-hmm. Um for your life, you you make a hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. We won't even include inflation. You are easily over your lifetime going to make at least two million dollars more. Mm-hmm. Meaning, is it, we're not even having the conversation about how much do you love your family because I know I know that's kind of a dumb conversation to have, and I hate when people go down that route. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it, on a on a balance sheet, you are the best asset in your financial model by a long shot. And you, this asset unemotionally is going to kick out at least $2 million, if not $3 million more throughout your life. Okay. And if something happens to that, to you, i.e. premature death, that money is not going to, not going to happen and will affect will affect other people. So all, all I'm saying is um, at least have enough life insurance to be like, hey, if I pass away, like what do I what do I want to happen for my kids and and wife? And I want to make sure that debts are eliminated. And you could mm-hmm. you could figure out that's kind of the needs analysis deal of like, okay, I need need, you know, a million bucks where so I can these things can happen with my family and we can pay off that debt. The, the flip side is um, how much money, like what is my real human life value? Mm-hmm. And I want to insure it just like I'm, I'm, if I have a $500,000 house, I want to insure it for half a million, not 200,000. And so this mm-hmm. would be something for both you and your wife. I would do that exercise, whether it's our company or someone else. Um, I would get term insurance. Mm-hmm. Especially, I know that you you mentioned to me earlier that you're interested in potentially permanent life insurance in the future. And, and that could be a good strategy to Mm -hmm. use with your stock portfolio. If you have at all inklings that you may want to do in a max funded over life, overfunded life insurance policy for the future, I would get convertible term, which means you're getting term insurance that can convert, but you're, but you're not overpaying for insurance right now with your current financial situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I would look into that and and okay. um and and make that happen for both both you and your wife. Any questions as it relates to that? Uh, could you just explain what convertible term? Yeah. What, what an example? So, or? Yeah, convert. So convertible term is. Are you are you? When I say term, do you know the difference between term insurance and permanent insurance? No. If you could explain that, that okay. would be great too. Great, great question. So permanent mm-hmm. insurance is what you know when when we talk about the and asset. A lot of videos mm-hmm. on our YouTube channel is we talk about. People look at insurance and they're max funding and they're building up cash value and they have a permanent death benefit and, you know, mm-hmm. they're able to utilize their policy. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, this is a permanent life insurance contract that the day that you die is when the insurance company's on the hook to pay that out. But we're mm-hmm. like souping that up to be, give you a lots of cash early on and liquidity. Okay. So that's, mm-hmm. that's permanent life insurance. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to last your entire life. Okay. Term, term insurance essentially says you can get a term insurance for like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. And what you're essentially doing is it doesn't have any cash value buildup component, but you're paying just like you're paying a car insurance or home insurance. You're paying yeah. the insurance company and you're essentially saying, if something happens to me during this term, 10 years, mm-hmm. 15, 20, 30 year term period, okay. something happens to me, you're going to pay out the amount of death benefit. All right. And so, that from a pure cost of insurance for that t- time period, it's by far the cheapest. If if people are just wanting to go the life insurance route, term insurance is makes a ton of sense. Right. Um, and so, for you, I think it's really important to get at least a, in a you know, when I say inexpensive, it still might be one or two percent of your of your income that you're making, but at least you're protecting, you're creating that umbrella around your whole financial model, because this is all made possible by you making money and by, mm-hmm. by your wife making money. Okay. And so, um, 
ter- term insurance is is a lot cheaper and you can get that for a t- period of time. C- the convertible option essentially says in the future, if you wanted like an and asset or an overfunded portion for for a, a better place to save and use your money, you mm-hmm. could do that without having to go through the exam again, no matter what your health status is like, you could just sign over and they're going to take your health rating that you got your term insurance and use it for your permanent. So okay. a convertible term just gives you another option for the okay. future. Um, and so whether you do that or whether you just go and get plain old term insurance, I think it's really important that you that that you get at least a million. But if if I'm being honest, I would I would get a quote for for two million, two and a half million on you, and about a million. Uh, on your wife, just to see what it looks like. Um, and then you could reverse engineer and say, Hey, I don't want to do that. What's the what's the what are the things that I want to happen if something happens to me? I want to okay. make sure my kids blah, 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 want to make sure the debts paid off and just add that up and make sure you're at least covering that. And then make sure that both you and your wife are on the same page. Because that's, that's the thing that's the most important is just making sure that um, you guys are on the same page and aligned with with the risk management side. Okay. Right. Definitely looking into that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, disability income insurance. This is essentially income insurance. Mm-hmm. And um, for people that, again, rely on cash, their active cash flow to sustain their model, um, if something happens to you from, from a physical standpoint, you know, sometimes work gives a short term disability, but you know, a lot of times you don't have long-term disability, meaning like if you get disabled and taken out of being able to work, um, how are we going to pay for that? It's not fun to talk about. It is important to at least understand, understand Mm -hmm. the quotes because your financial model is based on you and your wife working. So Mm -hmm. it would be important for you to know the quotes and again, be on the same page with your spouse of like, how, what are, how much do we want our income insured? And you guys might decide, Hey, I don't, we don't need this. We're going to take the risk. And then there's some people that are like, Hey, my whole financial life dramatically changes. If I'm not able to work, there's some people that are like, Hey, I can, as long as I can have the ability to think I can work. There's some people like doctors and other things that very much need, like if they broke their finger, boom, it takes them out of being able to make a large income. And so there's certain careers that's more important than others, but I think it's an important exercise to at least know what it would cost to insure your income. And this is something that we, we recommend anyone that we, we work with at least goes through this process to just know like how much it would cost to insure a portion of your income. Okay. Um, it's, it looks like your health insurance, auto home insurance, obviously you're going to ask about an umbrella next time. Mm -hmm. Um, but that seems good. I would for sure, um, get something with an estate plan. Um, there's two routes you can go. You can go the, um, you know, legal zoom route and just make sure that you're at least getting your ducks in a row and power of attorney. And essentially if anything happens to me or my wife, like what's going to happen to our kids, what's going to happen? Like, where do we want assets? Um, we also have relationships with attorneys that work in, work in Minnesota, and they can they can do an estate plan pretty affordable, and they would sit down with you and and make sure that everything is um, figured out from a estate plan standpoint. They would make sure your power of attorneys are set in. They would do um, you know a, a, you know trusts and wills and make sure that it, it is all aligned. So I would just I would uh, have a conversation with your wife and um, come up with a game plan. This is not fun to talk about, but it's important mm-hmm. that you know every day that goes by that there's at least something in, in writing that's going to say if the unthinkable happens, um, this is what's supposed to happen. Okay. Um, and then do you, um, what's your, what's your thoughts on college? Um, do you want both your kids to go to college or what's your overall thoughts on that? Uh, if they want to go to college, I would love them to go to college. I think it's great. Education is a good thing. Really want them to, learn and grow and do everything that they want to do. So yeah, I would prefer them to go get a college degree. Yes. Okay. Uh, but you got to pay for it. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That's, that's mm-hmm. definitely something that um, with the increasing in college, I, it's always mm-hmm. interesting to look at the math. And if you take mm-hmm. 
emotions out of it. You're like, well, for lots of people, college doesn't make sense. And then there's people that it makes a ton of sense for. So Mm -hmm. I think it's very situational. And I think that's, I mean, your, your kids are so young that there's, I think there's going to be a lot of change that, Mm -hmm. that we will see in the next 10, 15 years to what, what does college look like? Mm -hmm. All right. What questions do you have? I know I'm throwing a lot at you. (laughs) Um, was this as scary as it is? I, I know it can be nerve wracking. Any, anything that, uh, you have questions about any thing that you want to push back on? Because this is, this is a two way street. Yeah. Yeah. Paying off those credit cards is the most important thing. I'm hopeful that I can pump five grand a month, to pay it off and get those done in the next two years. And then when there's no daycare, pump all that money into paying off debts as well so yeah i mean that's my plan. i think that i think the big thing that i'll, I'll mm-hmm. challenge you and this might be the biggest takeaway yeah. is i think math i mean i think you should sell some of your investments pay off your debt mm-hmm. okay. i know you don't want to i can i can tell yeah I, I don't want to thinking. that's just something i really don't want to do like mathematically yeah. like yeah. i'm i'm just trying to think of like every reason mm-hmm. there's no reason you wouldn't want to do that like yeah but i understand like is it is it just like because we can go through, I mean, you're, you're a science guy. We can go, yeah. we can look at the math mm-hmm. and do scenario A versus scenario B. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, I'm more yeah. curious yeah. Out, of, out of anything. Cause I, I understand we are like compound interest, but we know mm-hmm. that every decision compounds. Yeah. Every decision compounds, meaning your credit card compounds and your assets compound. Yeah. Every decision every decision compounds. And so mm-hmm. I understand compound interest and future value, but it, I look at it through the whole lens, mm-hmm. not through one or the other. So is there, yeah. is there something that like, is, is there something I can better explain or do you want to have no. a conversation about this or is it more of like just a, an emotion? It's probably more of an emotional thing. Yeah. So I'll probably sell half okay. of them. All right. yeah. Yeah. I want, maybe we should have a, if yeah. you have, if you do send me like, maybe we'll have like part two. Yeah, um, we could probably do that. I, too. Actually, I actually see the, the couple things I see a lot. I see mm-hmm. people that have high balance in savings and checkings that mm-hmm. have that are paying interest on credit cards. Mm-hmm. And I look at that as a revolving debt and I'm like, why don't you just pay that off? Mm-hmm. But I also see the same thing where people mm-hmm. have investments, they're earning seven percent, mm-hmm. and then they're getting crushed over there. But then they in their mind they think it's like compound interest works different than paying interest. Mm-hmm. Whereas every decision we make compounds. Um, and so I think, I think any other questions that you have, cause I want to do kind of like a summary uh, of, mm-hmm. for, for you, but is there any other questions or things that you want to discuss? Um, life insurance, got to get that done. Uh, umbrella policy, estate planning, all those are going to be all those fun a challenge, but we got to get them all done. Everybody should get those done. So not the only one got to get that done um paying off debt if you could make child care child care less expensive that would be fantastic but that's uh yeah i mean it's it's yeah. it's so tough because it's mm-hmm. like um your wife it's like it's still worth you guys doing child care mm-hmm. and her working yeah but it's it's i i'm, I'm with you man like that's mm-hmm. a that's a pretty it's a to to pay that much per year on mm-hmm. that it's it's definitely going like that's eye-opening for sure or your kids yeah. go to public school or you're going to continue yeah. to pay for public school private? yeah yep. okay so, so taxes well spent there right <laughs> yes yes every year they go up so that's great yeah mm-hmm. yep so big ones credit card debt child care don't pay interest on credit card debt get that minimalized mm-hmm. yeah and I, and I think the big, the big thing that, you know, and if, if you want to mm-hmm. do a follow-up is, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I know that you want to take cash flow, pay off, mm-hmm. pay off debt. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying like, let's, let's do everything you can to see if you can pay off debt next month, yeah the bad debt next month. And I know mm-hmm. that's going to be like, you're going to feel poorer because mm-hmm. you're going to have like less assets, but math is going to say you're going to actually, everything is going to be good, except if you don't put that money back into investing. Yeah. If you, if you pay off all that debt and then continue to spend because now you have a new balance, mm-hmm. then, but that's not a math problem. That's a heart problem. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, okay. 
any any other any other questions or thoughts? Uh, it's a lot for one session, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll was have this, a was this up. more scary or less scary than you thought? Uh, not as scary as I thought. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a lot nicer. Like I, yeah. I, uh, I'm like I'm gonna be I'm gonna channel Dave, my inner Dave Ramsey, and yeah. I'm just gonna start yelling at people, and I just can't yeah. do it, man. Like no, I, no, I'm, I'm so grateful over well. for yeah. for people that watch this channel. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for people that come on and ask their questions. If you are watching this, you're like, hey, Caleb's not as scary as you know, as he, I thought he is. I don't think there's any videos of me like being crazy. Um, no. Come on. Like we want to hear from you, whether you have questions, whether you want to be brave, like, like Bradley and, and give me your financial life. Like I yeah. want to have more conversations. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that can be gained through talking about, mm -hmm. about this. Like I literally, some people in the past, when we've talked about all kinds of things mm -hmm. and what you'll know is everyone's different. Yeah. And and it's not, you can't just take cookie cutter examples and say, this mm -hmm. is what I should do. It's a way of thinking. Yeah. So my summary is you guys make mm -hmm. good income and we need to, we need to figure out a way to, to save significantly more, which mm -hmm. we have, I know where the money is. It's where your money's yeah. going to debt. Yeah. So to saving 20, 25%, like you're already spending that money just on debt that you're, that you're, that you've already you know, it's like, you're just doing that for maintaining debt. So I actually get excited about that. Cause it's not like you're spending $200,000 on just eating out. No, like, we not, never go out to eat hardly ever. Yeah, so I, I, see so that. I see that. I see where the stress yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm telling you what you said early on when it comes to stress and all that, I'm telling you that could be eliminated next month. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you will in 10, 15 years, this could be a difference of like $2 million. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, like it's just, it's just opportunity cost. So yeah. So you have good income, you have decisions to make about liabilities, whether you pay cash flow or just, you know, mm -hmm. figure out 401k loan, savings account, potentially talk to refinance or not refinance yeah. the whole entire loan, but figure out if there's extra equity that you can tap into, mm -hmm. um, sell your stocks right now mm -hmm. and do what you need to do to knock off that bad debt, take that cash flow, have that be reinvested. And, and when you reinvest, this is really, really, really important. Mm -hmm. Think with the end in mind as it relates to cash flow. Mm -hmm. Say, I am, if I'm going to put my money, think from, think from now, how mm -hmm. can I work with somebody that can help me think, how do I maximize cash flow when I'm 59 or 65? Yeah. How do I maximize cash flow? And you should be investing through the lens of cash flow, not rate of return, because we mm -hmm. just did the math. $3 million portfolio is awesome. But if it's, mm -hmm. if you don't have the right planning in place, it, it's like, it looks great, but but you're going to continue to be stressed the rest of your life because you're not going to know the best way to like leverage that. Yeah. And so it's important as you invest to think through the lens of, of cash flow, and then get, get term insurance. Mm -hmm. And, and if it was up to me, you would get term insurance um, based on your human life value, based on like what you're literally going to produce throughout your life to lock in like the value of your ability to earn and your wife's ability to earn. Mm -hmm. And then there's a world where when you do, income planning, you might realize that a portion of your assets should be in properly structured max funded life insurance, because that mm -hmm. might help you get more income. Like you have to mm -hmm. talk to someone that can look at your financial situation. But we, mm -hmm. we help a lot of people as it relates to take a portion of their, their quote unquote bonds and mm -hmm. make that life insurance. Um, and so that that's something that you could look into. Um, look into disability income insurance. My gut is saying that you, you guys are probably not going to go that route, but you at least yeah. should get that quote, okay. uh, get an estate plan. And again, we have, we have people that can help you or find someone local who can help you with that, or at least go online and get something that you can always update later, but at least have something. It's going to be the best couple hundred dollars you spend. And, um, there's, there's my final thoughts, man. I, I want to okay. thank you so much for being on the show and um, I look forward to staying in touch and seeing how we can yeah. continue to help know that I'm, I'm not going mm -hmm. anywhere and yeah. I'm committed to helping you and everyone watching this, like really, really get their life, yeah. um, like get more clarity and yeah, really definitely lean into have a follow up in like a year <laughs> and see where let's do that, man. Are. Let's, let's yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Sounds great. All right. Take care. <laughs>